Joining me here on the Rich Eisen Show uh, is uh, an all-pro tight end and an all-pro human being um, who gave to Run Rich Run this year. He said, I want to be part of your run. I offered him to be part of the run. He said, I will be part of the run. I mean, I'm, by the way, paraphrasing. This is not the way it, it did not sound like a Dr. Seuss book when we had this conversation. Uh, but he has been pizzayed, to use a Stuart Scott phrase. Uh, he is the tight end of the San Francisco 49ers. You're defending NFC champion 49ers. He is George Kittle here on the Rich Eisen Show. How are you, George? Rich, how you doing this morning, man? You know what? The last time we saw each other was in Indianapolis, and you said to me when you brought you, uh, on behalf of you and your lovely wife, a check for $10,000 to Run Rich Run, you said to me, you leaned over to me, you said in my ear, you said, you got my first big check. And I said to you, I think it's not the first, I think it's the first of many, right? And uh, I think you were right and I was right at the same time. I think we were both definitely right, 100%. <laughs> I'm, glad, I'm glad that we were both right, too. That's that's, that's fun. So is your wife, too, I'm sure. <laughs> I'm sure. Yeah, we are, yeah, we're pretty excited about it. Oh, man. Um, congratulations on getting the money you deserve and the respect uh, that that money, that money brings. Um, what was that like for you? Did you literally just tap out and let your agent handle it, or were you part of this process, George? Oh, no, I was definitely very involved with the process. Um, you know, luckily, my agent, uh, you know, Jack, he yep. did a good job of, uh, he kind of informed us, you know, from about a year ago just how the process was going, the things that, you know, we would be interested in. You know, like I don't, I didn't do all the words and stuff like that, you know, uh, and that part of the contract. But just knowing the, the structure of the set, uh, of the contract itself is what was interesting to me. So, being involved with the process was fun, um, and I really enjoyed it. So, I mean, just learning about that side of the side of the game was was pretty exciting for me. And um, I will say, I'm glad that it's over because it's pretty stressful sometimes. Yeah. But um, overall, I'm pretty glad that it's over. And uh, I was just happy that you know we got to work together and get the thing done and so both sides are happy yeah i i, I gotta admit to you george uh you know i've been in contract negotiations for me for my profession um i feel like i have a similar game at the microphone that you have as a tight end if i may say so um Chris, I love that. okay thank you well i mean you know i gotta speak it into existence to use the phrase um 100 but, but i cannot recall ever using the word fun to describe a negotiation i i, I would never associate that word with it in a million years <laughs> i just more i just more of the, like the learning process behind it of like what actually goes into making a contract i just thought that was really interesting like um just whether it was the structure of the contract like just learning about the apy the guarantees and all that stuff just how it all worked and how it flowed together uh it's made a lot more sense to me than just you know hey like don't just look at a one big number you want to look at the things in the back that you know maybe not everyone wants to see and so it was just fun being able to learn about that whole process. George Kittle here on the Rich Eisen Show. Just a few weeks ago, I said that, you know, if there's such a thing as winning the offseason, I, I said your team did. You know, obviously the Chiefs, um, you know, no offense of giving you a run for your money by getting Mahomes under contract and their general manager. But, you know, your team got your general manager under contract and you, uh, you had a great draft and obviously – getting you under contract and Trent Williams to me was, you know, lost in the draft shuffle. What, what has he looked like in practice? George, hey, must... Rich, I'll tell you this. Right. He, uh, I don't have to play very well. And when we play next to each other, it's still going to look really good. That's pretty fun. <laughs> to see. That's He's like, you know, like you, you know, work on your double teams, like doubling and defensive end up to a linebacker. I don't know if he needs me to block both of them. No kidding. That's what's so cool. So it's, I'm just, I feel like I'm just like the icing on top when it comes to any time I block with him. It's really cool. Wow. It's, uh, he makes my job easy. And he's incredibly fast. He's just fun to be in a huddle with, too. I, I just appreciate his knowledge and just how much, like, the game means to him. You can just see it every single time he steps on the field. And so he's, he's done great in our locker room, and uh, I, I know it's going to be really fun to play with him all year. What is it like being in a huddle in the COVID-19 era, my friend? What in the world is that like? Um, well... I mean, honestly, it's not that different. You know, with the just getting in the facility with all the testing and all that and, like, the regulations we keep, you know, six feet apart with our desks and you're, you wear a mask the whole day, and that's kind of weird. But, you know, when you're on the football field, you still got to play football. And, you know, they, they monitor us with, like, trackers to see, you know, you know, how close you are to people for, like, the duration of time, and, uh, which is interesting. But, you know, be, it just feels good to be back in an NFL huddle, I will say that. Just uh, It's just, like, um, some real, like, it just feels normal, and it's it's just fun to feel that again. Well, I mean, you had one of your teammates uh, at the forefront of the conversations on behalf of the union with the league on everything um, in Richard Sherman. Um, and do, do you all together, from Richard to the rest of your team, feel 
like everything is being done to keep you guys safe? Are you are you cool with everything that's uh, been laid out and is that you're going through right now as a professional, think, George? Oh, yeah. I think what we're doing right now, I, I think the regulations that, you know, and I, I can't speak for other teams. I know people are doing it differently in other places. Um, but I think what we're doing right now is incredible. Um, you know, this the testing, like to get guys into the building, the amount of testing it takes them, how many days they have to clear. Um, they do such a great job with the distancing. And, you know, we have, it really, they've outfitted the entire st- um, facility, you know, for this. I mean, they've made it as normal as possible, which has been really fun. And it's kind of cool because they're using different parts of our facilities too. So, like, we have a meeting room that's in our press box, you know, it's just for space. And it's just, seeing the, like, how hard they work to make it safe for us is, it's really fun. I mean, it's incredible to see, honestly, just because of how much hard work went into it. So I do, I, I do feel safe. I know a lot of the other guys feel safe. Okay. Does that give you uh, a better uh, appreciation of the press that how high up? They stick the press to watch the games, and they're able to be to do their jobs with a little better appreciation. George, for you, uh, you know, sometimes you know, I, I might feel that, um, but I know honestly, I just sit back and I'm like, hey, you know what? It's a great view. So I, it I isn't. It is. It's way. It's, it's high it's up there, man. I, they put the press way up, way up there. So I mean, I, I'm I'm obviously having a little fun with it, but you know, the question I get tons of questions all the time. What do I think? Do I think? that there's going to be a football season. How is it going to work? Uh, I get a ton of it. You must as well. I basically give the answer of from what I'm hearing, you are living it. Do you think that the way that this is constructed and the plan that you think that there will be a week one through 17 regular season in the NFL, George? I think it all depends on how seriously the teams and the players take it. Um, no, you got you to kind of, shut off some of the outside distraction, you know, more than you would in a normal season. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's going to definitely change the livelihoods of a lot of people in the NFL. Um, but you just, I mean, I guess at the end of the day, you just have to be responsible. And, you know, hey, if you want to play football, then you have to follow these rules and you can't ruin it for anyone else. And I think if all the teams and all the players do that, oh, 100%, I think there's going to be a season. I know there's variables of traveling and hotels and stuff like that. But the way that we've had it set up here is, uh, I mean, it gives me a lot of faith that it could actually get done. Yeah, I mean uh, that's part of the answer. What I have, you very, you're very, uh, you chose your words very, very well. Again, you're a smart Big Ten guy. Um, so <laughs> it's just that if everybody, uh, when they go home, stay safe. However, you want to um, describe that, stay safe. That obviously there will be kids who may go to school or go out, and vectors are brought into the house. And I think the testing that the way that the NFL is setting it up might, you know, should catch it. Okay, they should be able to identify who might be asymptomatic in that nature. But it is your co- some of your colleagues who might just decide to say, screw it, I'm going to still have a social life and live my life in that manner. Have you had a conversation uh, amongst the team about knocking that off, for the lack of a better phrase, George? I think one of the best things that our team did, um, you know, our head of player development, um, our personnel guy, Ben, he, uh, he had a uh, – he like tell stories like, hey, for example, let's just say um, Trent Williams, you want to, you know, go to a bar and you get a drink, and then you come back and we don't test you, right? Like you get tested, but we don't have the results for 24 hours, and you actually end up testing positive, but you don't know it yet. How many people have you talked to, you know, in the last 24 hours that have now, you know, potentially been infected? And so like he, they're using stories like a real, you know, example. So like, hey, if you talk to eight people those eight guys can't play in a football game if it's on a like Friday night because it's a 48 hour window. And so it's just like, it kind of makes it real. Like, Hey, like you have to change the way you're living. Otherwise you're going to put other guys at risk that are taking it seriously. And I think that's, that's a responsibility. And I mean, guys don't want to put other guys at risk. And so I think our team is doing a great job with that so far. And, you know, I've just been really, you know, um, it's been really cool to see the progress that a lot of guys have made just like understanding that process. And, Um, Like I said, I think it's going really well so far. George Kittle, a few minutes left with the San Francisco 49ers tight end here on the Rich Eisen Show. Couldn't help but notice you get your contract. We're talking about it. There's a lot of buzz. And then then Kelsey signs his later that day. Do you think he did that on purpose, George? To take some of your thunder on purpose? Away? Yeah, but he's like, let's <laughs> hold know. my contract. Let's uh, hold my contract. We're... Kittle signs his. I want to steal some of his thunder. Do you think he did it? That? That's very oh, odd no. timing. That's very odd timing, George. I thought. Oh, it's not. It's just tight ends getting the work done together. That's all it is. No, it's, uh, you're all we about the national. T- you're all about the national tight ends day, man. I love it. Twenty four seven, three sixty five. Every day's tight oh, ends rich. day. 
It is. You kidding me? Like, and you know what Travis has done for the position, and then um, I think kind of together we kind of you know kicked a hole, uh, you know, right in the ceiling, you know, about you know how tight ends should get paid, and I, I just yeah. it's awesome, and I think it's just going to continue to set the tone and set the tone, and um, I just love the fact that tight ends are getting the recognition that they deserve because it is such a difficult position. Maybe that's and, why. Uh, maybe that's why Gronk came back, George. What do you think? He's sick and tired of seeing you <laughs> and Kelsey uh, set the table like that. I think he just wants to, you know, be a part of the National Tight End Day again because, you know, it is his Gronk spike is the logo. So I think he has oh, a say in it. Oh, that's right. I totally forgot about that. Well, yeah, you got to know the details, Rich. You know, I should. I should. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm a little punter focused, but you know that. I'm coming around though. <laughs> I'm, I'm, sl- I'm slowly coming around, George. Okay, so, uh, all right. So you think everything is set up for a season? That's so damn exciting, man. And then your schedule. Uh, you're you're going to spend a, a. It looks like a couple of your back to back games in uh, in the same stadium. Are you going to set up shop in New York for weeks two and three? Is that the way you're? You guys are are discussing it right now. Oh, uh, right you don't know yet. I don't know. I know what we did last year when we went to. I think we played at the Ravens and then at New Orleans. So we just stayed in Florida for the whole for that week in between, which was nice. We didn't have to fly five hours back. And I'm assuming that we might do the same thing. And okay. I know a lot of like I love that what we did last year because you don't have to fly and you get to stay on the East Coast in that time zone, which was awesome. Um, so I mean, I hope we do it. I don't know. Um, but, you know, I don't know the difficulties of doing it, you know, just in today's you know day and age. And so, okay. but I'm open to it. And if we can work it out, I'd love it. George, I, I'm, I'm so thrilled you called in today. And, you know, uh, you're really one of my favorites. And, you know, I, it's true. You, you came on this show last year. You're like, I want to time you for your run. I, you know, I'm like, great. I'll, I'll reach out. I did. You did it. You came, you were part of the, the Run Rich Run, you know, with Jerry Rice. So it was 49er greats in the past and the present. And just you being present and talking to Vaughn, the eight-year-old who was there recovering from uh, brain surgery and making his day even more special and then adding to the cause, you're really a special human, George, and I want everyone to know that if they already did. That's a fact. Thank you, Rich. I really appreciate that. You know, I saw the, the timer that I timed you on is still on the one you signed for me. Mm-hmm. So your time across that. Okay. Blazing fast. Right? If, well, you know what, George? I, pl- I appreciate you adding that adjective of blazing. I appreciate that. Blazing fast. <laughs> I love it. I love it. And that was great. And, um, you know, it feels like years ago with what's going on in the real world. But uh, I just wanted to get you on the show. And I appreciate you being on the first Peacock show. And hopefully it's the first of many times. You take care of yourself. Hey, man. And congratulations, man. That's, Thanks, it's, brother. It's so sick. I really, it's awesome. You know, I Thanks, do love listening to you. And I know my dad does too. So yes. I really appreciate it. Send my, best to, send my best to all the kittles. You take care of yourself, George. We'll, we'll, we'll chat we'll down do. the line. Yep, see you guys. You got it. It's George Kittle, at GKittle46 on Instagram and Twitter. Hard to not like that guy. Oh.